Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to talk about healers and how to play them efficiently. The reason I have to do this is because the new Abyss, especially Floor 11, introduced a new sort of mechanic that makes you consistently lose a ton of HP, which means that we actually need healers that are properly built for once. There's effectively a new type of difficulty to where it's not just a DPS check, it's not just trying to clear the content as fast as possible, but we're actually trying to survive. Since survival is the goal, having healers that are properly built is essential, especially because we can't rely on shields or just spamming, you know, iframes, dodging, to save ourselves. And I also want to specify that in this video, I will be covering how to build every specific healer individually, how to gear them, artifact sets, artifact stats, and all that. Also, while I was initially going to wait for Kokomi before making this video, I feel like it's a time-sensitive one since a lot of people are struggling with the new Abyss right now, so I want to get it out as soon as possible. And for Kokomi, I will mention what's suspected to be good on her uh, later in the video, but I'll also update the pinned comment and release a full Kokomi guide when she does come out, so just be sure to check that. And while I have mentioned the Abyss a lot in the intro, this isn't just an Abyss video. It'll also be catered to building your healers in general for most content in the game. But before I do that, I want you guys to know that I stream most nights on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested. Be sure to sub if you're new and let's go. First of all, regarding this new floor 11, if you don't know what it is, it introduces this new corrosion status. When you're inside this floor, your characters will gain corrosion status every time you defeat an opponent. This gets applied to all party members and it can continuously stack up, lasting for 10 seconds each, and basically it just deals a ton of damage. As you can see, characters being corroded will lose a fraction of their HP every second. Active characters can be killed by this, but non-active characters can only go up to uh, or lose all the way down to 15% HP. Because of that, your team's going to be consistently taking an insane amount of damage, making it very hard to survive if you're not healing properly or have, you know, good, well-built healers. Also, and honestly, most importantly, for this video and for healers in general, you guys should know that there are multiple different ways to build them. Basically, what I mean by this is you can go on a build that completely maximizes healing, right? Where generally speaking, you're building uh, whatever they scale off of so usually attack or hp on their sands and goblet with a healing bonus circlet to where you're getting just the maximum amount of healing possible for a lot of players for co-op for floor 11 stuff like that can be what you want to build but generally speaking what you're trying to do is heal just enough for whatever you're doing build good enough artifacts to where you heal enough and then after that everything else you can invest in damage or more offensive stats the reason for that is for example my gene with a four piece for and venerer will not only give me a ton of damage by reducing the opponent's elemental resistance and deal mass amounts of damage on her abilities with my crit circlet and my Nemo goblet. But even without going full healing, she'll still heal more than enough to make this abyss easy. She can still fully heal all my characters instantly to where I don't need to go overkill on healing. That being said, I will cover how to get the absolute maximum amount of healing in this video, if that's what you wanna build. And I'll also be covering more quote unquote optimal or generalist build sets. The last thing I wanna mention before I begin is that the Maiden's Beloved set is generally the set that'll give you the most healing, but is rarely optimal. The reason for that is because running more offensive sets like Verdescent Venerer for Jean or Noblesse Oblige for general supports will provide your team with a significant amount of more damage or attack percent in this case to where you're clearing a lot faster, meaning you need less healing. And if you do need more healing, it's generally preferable to stack it on your artifacts, go for like a healing bonus circlet over losing out on this damage that you provide your whole team and going with the Maiden set. However, and I want to make it clear, it can be very good if you don't have enough healing and it can be good for casual players and if you just get a good set of this passive while farming for Verdescent Venerer. And so I just wanted to cover the set right now. It is the most healing you can get because it gives you 15% healing effectiveness. And then when you use your skill or your burst, all your party members will receive 20% more healing for 10 seconds, which is actually a lot. For some characters like Diona, if you really want her burst to heal more, a set like this can be considered, but is very rarely optimal unless you need more, in which case you can go for the set. And so what I want to do now is show you guys that my Jean, who's not running a super invested healer build, just has a strong attack sands is a decent level right level 80 with a level 8 talent on her burst but not maxed out on healing so she's not running like a healing bonus circlet not running an attack goblet she's really just on an attack sands for healing and on a four piece verdescent venerer which will give you a lot less healing than maidens can still heal more than enough for the floor 11 to where i don't need to just invest in healing i can still give her a lot of damage to make my life a lot easier in this floor all right so i just cleared like about two waves of enemies without really healing i'm gonna let all my uh all my characters get down to pretty low HP here as you can see so most of them are in the red zone right and as you can see all I'm gonna do is use my jeans burst and then suddenly all my characters HP is basically full I can swap into my Shao heal inside of this range and just passively I'm gonna go back to full HP the corruption may have worn off but you can basically just do that on cooldown since it's not that hard to get jeans burst back on cooldown especially if you run you know a decent amount of energy recharge or an energy recharge weapon to where basically while you're just passively killing all the enemies you can 
heal back up to full HP with your gene, even in content like the floor 11. Now, this doesn't mean you can't run more healing. If you want to heal a lot more, you can. But I just want to basically point out that the amount of healing you need is oftentimes overestimated to where even this amount, which is honestly pretty low, is more than enough to keep all my characters very healthy. But yeah, so my point overall was just that you can usually get away with offensive stats, especially on a character like Jean, and still heal enough. And with other characters who might heal slower, you can go for more healing, but you still usually can run an offensive set and just maximize your healing on your pieces with something like a healing bonus circlet, and then whatever your scaling is on your goblet and sands. Okay, so now with all of that out of the way, I now want to get into specific character builds, how to build every single healer, not only for the most healing, we're going to cover that, but also the more optimal builds for every piece of content, where you're healing enough but also dealing damage and providing more utility to your team. So with Jean, who I already covered somewhat briefly, I'm going to go in a bit more detail. Basically, for more damage, you're going to want to run the 4-piece Verdescent Venerer, especially if you're running an elemental carry in your team. Her healing does scale off of attack, as you can see, which is why attack percent is what you're going to be building for more healing. Because of that, you want an attack percent sans on Jean, generally speaking. And to maximize your healing, you can go attack on your goblet as well with a healing bonus circlet. But generally speaking, you don't need that much healing, as I showed earlier, to where you can min max your gene by going for a crit circlet crit rate or crit damage with an anemo damage bonus goblet as long as your talent is high enough level and you have an attack percent sands with a high level weapon you can usually heal more than enough since your burst is so good gene is one of the best healers in the game and probably the best healer for floor 11 because she gives a burst of healing to your entire team leaves a field on the ground that will heal over time deals a lot of damage and is an anemo unit which means she can make use of the verdes and venera set weapon wise i usually run her on a skyward blade but there's a ton of really good options for her. Energy recharge swords are great to spam your burst on cooldown, and it makes it to where you don't need an energy recharge sans. You can go attack percent and get more healing. But there's also more offensive weapons. Uh, something like a crit substat can be nice, and even attack percent weapons. Something like the flute is better on Jean than on other characters, because it will not only give her some damage, but also amplify her healing, making attack percent weapons actually pretty good. So there are many options, and even some good free-to-play ones, like Festering Desire, or the new Blacksmith one. Now, the next character I want to talk about is actually Bennett, one of the strongest characters in the game by far if not the strongest amazing amazing healer uh, gives you attack percent can dps as well gives you a ton of particles just a great unit overall the way you want to build him to maximize his healing is by giving him hp because that is what his healing scales off of his attack bonus though does scale off of his base attack which means you usually want to give him some hp so that he heals on something like his goblet with a healing bonus circlet to maximize his healing but also give him a high base attack weapon so something like aquila favonia uh, alley flash if you have it or just any weapon that has a high base attack and and or energy recharge. Honestly, energy recharge is also super important for Bennett. Usually what you try to do is give him enough energy recharge to spam his burst on cooldown with a high base stack weapon. That means that weapons that have energy recharge are typically good, but weapons with a high base stack are generally very good as well, if not better. The reason for that, and a crucial thing to understand with Bennett, is that you can build energy recharge on your artifacts if you need more, but you can't build base attack off your artifacts. Your attack buff only scales off your weapon and your character's level, to where having a high base stack on your weapon is very important. Because of that, I I tend to recommend an energy recharge weapon for the early mid game and honestly most of the game but when you're mid maxing when you have enough energy recharge you can swap over to a high base attack weapon and then build energy recharge on your artifacts to make up for it personally i'm running him on aquila favonia with energy recharge on my sand so that I can spend my burst on cooldown, and then an HP goblet healing bonus circlet to give me more than enough healing, even for floor 11. The max healing on Bennett though would be going full HP with a healing bonus circlet, and obviously like Maiden's Beloved, but you typically don't need that much if your artifacts are leveled, to where I do recommend Noblesse Oblige with an energy recharge sands to spam your burst on cooldown. Now next up, I want to talk about Diona. Diona is a character who has an amazing shield that can basically save you from a lot of hits. You don't have to dodge as much. Very comfy shield, gives you a lot of particles, and her burst also heals you. The problem with Diona is that she's usually good for most content and one of the strongest 4-star healers because of her powerful shield. But in a place like Floor 11, where shields don't matter as much, she's one of the few characters that actually needs a lot of healing invested into her to be able to keep up with Floor 11, or you have to run her with another healer. What that means is that for most content, I really like Diona. For piece no bless oblige with either energy recharge or HP on the sands, then HP on every other piece to maximize your shield is usually what I recommend. But for the new floor 11, you might want to actually max your healing more. In case you don't know, everything about her does scale off of HP. Her shield and her burst, both like the healing and the strength of the shield, will scale off of your HP. Because of that, leveling your Diona is very important, and also giving her HP and healing bonus on the circlet for more healing, 
or HP on the circlet for a stronger shield. I can see the argument for this abyss to run something like Maiden's Beloved or even like two-piece Tenacity of Millilith with two-piece Maidens to give you, once again, more healing and more HP with the two-piece Millilith. Overall though, if you have enough healing uh, and you don't need these healing sets, Noblesse Oblige is still what I recommend for more attack percent to make your burst sort of like a mini Bennett burst, just basically buffing your team a little bit more. Now, I'm gonna show you how much my Diona can heal. What I'm gonna do is run her on triple HP, which is a shield build, not a, you know, quote unquote healer build on Noblesse Oblige as a only level 70 Diona. And once again, obviously your HP goes up uh, very significantly when you level her. Okay, so I cleared two waves of enemies here. Uh, basically, my HP is starting to get low. I'm going to swap to my Diona, who once again isn't on like healing bonus. Use her burst, get a shield so I don't take damage. Swap to my Shao, and then like I will passively heal up while I'm fighting. But Diona's rate of healing honestly isn't that high. Um, although this build is still good enough, as you can see, my characters are getting healed up. They're both back to almost full HP, and then I can swap to Diona, use my skill, uh, and I'll get my burst back in two seconds, or, you know, maybe I need a bit more energy recharge. But basically, like, you can keep your team alive on Diona, even if you're not stacking the most healing, but it is harder than with other characters, um, like, you know, even Bennett, Jean, Barbara, anyone like that, to where you can want to run more healing. And so to sum this section up and not make it too confusing, basically for a shield build, stack HP. But if you want to give her more healing, go healing bonus on the circlet. And you can consider changing your artifact set to something that gives you more healing, like potentially uh, Maidens and Tenacity. Also for Diona's weapons, it's usually a debate between Sacrificial Bow and Favonius. I went into more detail in my Diona guide, but basically what you need to know is that both are very good. Sack Bow will give you more Cryo Particles and let you use your, your shield twice. So if your shield's breaking or if you just want a second one, you can go for Sack Bow. It's also better if you run a Cryo DPS or another Cryo unit that wants those Cryo Particles. Whereas Favonius Bow is the more general option, especially if you have enough crit rate to proc the effect constantly. The reason for that is because Favonius Warbow will give you more energy recharge, whereas Sack Bow gives you more base attack. And Favonius Warbow also gives you White Particles, which generate more energy for your whole team, whereas Sack Bow gives you Cryo Particles by letting you use your skill another time. Overall, they're both good. They depend on preference. I tend to recommend Favonius Warbow late game when you have enough crit rate and Sacrificial Bow, if not, for a more comfy playstyle and more Cryo Particles. And it is what I personally tend to use. Also, I wanted to mention that Elegy of the End is pretty good, but not many people have it, but you can use it if you do. Next up, I want to talk about Chi Chi. Chi Chi is a character who actually got a lot more useful this Abyss rotation because all she does is just give you a ton of healing. Chi Chi's healing is insanely high. It's actually so high that you'll usually overheal to where you don't really need to invest that that much into her healing. In case you're wondering, her healing does scale off of attack percent or attack, uh, as you can see, which is why that's what you want to build on her for more healing. However, as I mentioned, she mainly just gives you healing. Sure, her burst deals a lot of damage, but it does have a very high energy cost and Chi Chi doesn't generate any particles for some reason. Because of that, you usually want to build stuff like, you know, Sacrificial Sword, Energy Recharge, and you can even give her some damage or artifact sets that will give your team more damage to basically make her more than just a pure healer. In the early game, for co-op or for floor 11, having a character who just heals is pretty good though, which is why Chi Chi is a lot better this abyss. But I will show you that even when you're not max invested into your Chi Chi, she will heal more than enough because of how much healing she gives you. One thing I want to mention though is that I basically always, always, always recommend a Tenacity of the Millilith set for Chi Chi. This is an artifact set that gives her a, a bigger use than just a heal bot because it will give your party members 20% attack every time her elemental skill hits an opponent. And as you know, Chi Chi's skill spins around her for a long time from off field. That means that even when you're on other characters DPSing on, you know, anyone else, you will be gaining this attack percent bonus. So in terms of her artifacts, to max maximize her healing as I mentioned, attack percent is what you want to go for and you can consider a healing bonus circlet, but it is usually overkill. To show you what I mean, I'm going to run her on an attack sans. Uh, I'm going to remove my goblet uh, just because I don't want to give her that much healing. Uh, she is on a crit circlet, attack sans, and you know, flower feather. So with no goblet, uh, a sacrificial sword, a level 60 chi chi, which again is low level, and only a level 6 burst, level 5 uh, skill, I'm going to show you that she can effectively keep my team up and healthy. Okay, so now all my characters are like on life support, they're all about to die. So uh, let me just swap the Chi Chi here. I'm gonna use her burst. And as you see, first of all, um, you know, there's gonna be a mark on this enemy, which means I can swap to any character, start attacking them. And just by attacking them, all of my HP is going to be restored very quickly. Um, and this is with a Chi Chi who's very underinvested. You can also attack on your Chi Chi to heal like all your party members. But generally speaking, just attacking on the individual characters, using your skill that gives you some healing passively will be more than enough. Now you might be thinking, oh, but some of my characters are low HP, uh, but honestly, like, it's very easy to maintain it because Chi Chi's mark that you apply off your passive and your uh, burst 
as long as you use your burst relatively frequently on cooldown or whatever, uh, you can easily keep up with all the enemies, um, with all the corruption stacks that are afflicted to you. The one thing I want to point out, as you can see my HP is back to full, is that this Chi Chi, as I mentioned, is on very low investment. So I'm just doing this to prove that Chi Chi's inherent healing is very high, which is why I tend to recommend not building maidens on her going for Millilith. And then after that, your artifact main stats can honestly depend. Your sands can be attack percent or energy recharge. Your goblet can be attack percent for damage and healing, or even cryo goblet if you want. Uh, Chi Chi's damage isn't that high though, especially if you're not super investing into your Chi Chi, which usually you shouldn't be, but it is a viable option if you can spam your burst on cooldown. Uh, and then her circlet can be crit for more damage or attack percent. Something to keep in mind though, is that in floor 11, there's a lot of enemies, which means you will be gaining particles just from that. Uh, but if you can't spam your burst on cooldown, energy recharge sands and or a sacrificial sword, which is her best weapon because of the long elemental skill cooldown that she has. But attack percent weapons can give her more healing and damage. Something like the flute is okay. A Favonia sword will give her ER and generate particles for your whole team when you're critting. And honestly, just energy recharge swords as a whole are pretty nice with sacrificial sword being the best by far. Now, next up, I want to talk about Barbara. And Barbara is honestly one of the most underrated characters just consistently. Like, yeah, she's not the best character in the game, but she provides a lot of utility and things that people tend to forget. Not only does she give you enough Hydra application, even from off field with her elemental skill, but she also can provide you with Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, which is definitely her best weapon, giving 48% attack to whoever you switch into. On top of that, her healing is honestly pretty good as long as you level her talents. Uh, yes, her skill can be annoying and can freeze you if you're fighting like Cryo Slimes or whatever, but in general, uh, it does heal you passively and your burst will heal your whole team a significant amount. Her healing does scale off of her HP, so when you're building her, that is what you want to stack on your pieces. You can go for HP on the Sands, Goblet, and then Healing Bonus on the Circlet for the most healing possible, although Energy Recharge is also viable on your pieces. The one thing I want to say for artifact sets is Barbara is one of the few characters where something like Maidens or going for more healing can actually be viable. The reason for that is because while I run her on Noblesse, Noblesse doesn't have the greatest uptime. Not only does her burst cost a lot of energy, but you don't really want to spam it on cooldown, you more so want to use it when you need the healing. So running for Noblesse on her, while it can still be the best if you already have enough healing, like I do, which is why I run it. Uh, if you need more healing, the uptime of the effect won't be that good to where I can recommend also running healing sets like Two Piece Maidens Beloved with uh, Two Piece Tenacity of the Millilith or even Four Piece Maidens Beloved if you just want to max your healing and do nothing else. Also, while this won't concern too many players, if you are running a reaction team and your Barbara does manage to trigger reactions, Instructor can be pretty good. But do keep in mind, this is a four star artifact set, so you'll get a lot less stats. Also regarding Kokomi, while I said in the intro that I'll make a separate video for her, when she comes out, it's suspected that she'll have a similar build to Barbara. Uh, I know she might want like damage or whatever, but as a healer, it looks like she will be scaling off of HP and healing bonus, but I could be wrong. So just be sure to check the pinned comment when Kokomi comes out and watch my guide on her if you are wondering about Kokomi. Next up, one of the healers that actually has a lot of nuance uh, to her kit is Sayu. Sayu is a character who scales off of many different things. Her healing for the most part does scale off her attack, especially when you look at her burst. As you can see, the skill activation healing and the Daruma healing both scale with her attack. Because of that, building attack on her usually gives her more healing, but as you guys can also see, her swirls will heal your characters based off her elemental mastery. That means that she heals both with attack and with elemental mastery. On top of that, at her sixth constellation, if you do have it, she basically gains a ton more healing and damage with elemental mastery, so that is definitely what you're going to want to be building if you are C6. However, for most Sayus, anyone that doesn't have her at the sixth constellation, it can be sort of confusing as to, okay, should I build attack or should I build elemental mastery on my Sayu. The one thing I want to say is that generally if you build elemental mastery on Sayu and then put her on a healing bonus circlet, you will be dealing a lot of damage with your swirls, but also healing enough because of your circlet. However, if you just want pure healing, attack percent will give you more than elemental mastery. So obviously for just raw healing, attack percent, sands, goblet, and healing bonus is the way to go. Now, if you want a nice hybrid build between healing and damage, as I said, elemental mastery on your goblet uh, and then going healing bonus on your circlet will give you more damage and still a lot of healing. However, something you'll also notice with Sayu is that it might be hard to get your burst up on cooldown. That's why a lot of people tend to run and recommend an energy recharge sands for Sayu. While that is good and you can definitely go ER sands for Sayu, you can also just go for a energy recharge weapon like a Favonius or a Sacrificial Greatsword, which 
gives you energy recharge and then has a really good effect. And you can look for some energy recharge on your substats to allow you to run a different sense. However, it does really depend on your rotation. Basically, the exact amount of energy recharge Sayu needs highly depends on you, the content you're clearing, and your rotation. You can need somewhere from 160 to 200 energy recharge, which is a big amount and why a lot of people can go for an energy recharge sans on her. Regarding your artifact sets, there are a few that work, but with the Nemo healers, I always recommend Verdescent Venerer as long as you're running at least one elemental carry or strong elemental support in your team, like maybe Official or anyone whose damage would like to be buffed. If you do need more healing though, obviously something like Maiden's Beloved can work and even Noblesse Oblige as a replacement to Verdescent Venerer to give your team that 20% uh, attack buff can be viable. Regarding your weapons, while I mentioned that energy recharge swords are great and what I usually use, uh, like Favonius or Sacrificial, and the new free-to-play Claymore also having energy recharge, so that's something you can keep in mind. There are other viable options like Rain Slasher that gives elemental mastery, uh, same thing with Blood Tainted if you just want EM, or even some attack percent Claymores like Wolf's Gravestone if you have it, usually being amazing because of the insane effect that buffs your whole team and will give you an insane amount of healing because of how much attack percent it gives you. For most players though, I do tend to recommend energy recharge Claymores, unless you do have like like the Wolf's Gravestone. Lastly, regarding Noelle, I don't really want to cover her in this video because I don't think she's a good enough healer for floor 11. I know you can clear it with Noelle. I don't want to see a bunch of people being like, oh, I nine starred with Noelle. Why are you saying? I, I know, okay? But her healing's so much lower than everyone else I mentioned. It doesn't even have a 100% chance of healing. There's a triggering chance. And so while she can be a good DPS and like a C6 Noelle can do a solid amount of damage while healing herself, as a healer, I really don't recommend it. But if you do want to run it, her healing does scale off of defense. So you can go for defense defense percent with a healing bonus circlet. Although again, I would much rather just run Barbara, Diona, Jean, anyone else you could have. And overall, I want to say that there's a lot of really good healers in this game. And since floor 11, the new one at least, is one of the reasons why I'm making this video. It's not the only reason. And I want this video to be universal that people can watch when they just want to build a healer. I do want to say that you can pick the healer that's right for you, for your team, whichever one provides you with the most utility. What I mean is some characters will give you more raw healing than others, whereas others give you more utility, like for example, Diona's shield or Bennett's damage, the insane amount of attack that he gives your whole team, can be what you need. And so overall, the best healer for you really depends on that. But basically, every single healer can get you through floor 11 as long as you build them properly. And so I tried to cover that in this video, how to build every healer both for maximum healing and in a more optimal way, where you also give them a good offensive set, more damage, or just whatever the character needs. But yeah, that's about it. I hope this video helped you build your healers properly, and hopefully you can clear the abyss without a problem. If you have any questions or concerns, be sure to leave them in the comments down below because I do read most of them. Feel free to follow me on Twitch, join the Discord, subscribe if you're new, all that stuff. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.